everyone, welcome back. Hope you're all okay. Had a good Christmas and a new year and everything. Hope you're all keeping safe. Um, it's been a while since I posted a video because 2021 was not a, not a great year for a lot of people, me included. So uh, anyway, I'm back now. Um, keen to get going with the Mexi and of course the 63 needs a bit of work and so does the square back. Uh, but first of all, as is usually the case, before I start working on a car, I have to work on something else. In this instance, I'm working on the trailer. And here's why. The Mexi is up on the lift, Mark 74 is underneath the lift, and the trailer is sat there currently empty. The 63 and the square back are both stored elsewhere. Now, because this unit isn't that big, to work on whichever car's on the lift means there can't be a car under the lift. And the only place to put the car is on the trailer. Okay, with me so far? Great. Now, the trailer had a winch on it. Um, that's it there, a manual winch, but it wasn't the best. So I want to upgrade it to the electric winch, which is in that box there. Now, obviously the Maxi doesn't run, the 74 doesn't run. So the only way to get them onto the trailer is to winch it. Using the hand winch is a pain. So, uh, so yeah, today's job is to put that electric winch on. Now, this is not as straightforward as it first appears because there isn't actually where to mount the winch on the trailer. Okay, from the factory, the trailer comes with this arm and the winch mounts on top there. Now that's that's fine for the manual winch, but as you can see, the arm is not central to the trailer, which means that the winch is always off to one side. Not really a massive problem, but I prefer it if the winch was in the middle. Uh, now obviously this, this arm, with this bend in it here, this angle in it, is clearly strong enough to carry the load from the winch pulling that way. So my plan is to pull this out, it's, it's adjustable, you can put it in different positions, is to pull it out and flip it 90 degrees so that it's lying flat and then mount the winch to this face of it so it's going to be here somewhere in the middle. The problem is, because these things are never simple, that this here, oops, when you turn it 90 degrees, put it back in, Oops, it's difficult one handed. There, when you put it back in, it fouls on all the towing gear. So I need to figure out how to get it past that so that it can all move this way and mount the winch here. Two ways of doing that, I think. The first way is that the trailer bed is bolted to the chassis rail there, and obviously, same there. I might be able to undo these bolts and just lift it up enough that the front of this arm clears the tow hitch or alternatively all the tow hitch and everything bolts to the trailer there and there so maybe I can just undo those and lift that out of the way uh, not sure which way I'm going to do it yet but I'll set the cameras up and uh, we'll both find out together just looking underneath the trailer this is the, the trailer arm here and there's the arm that the winch is going to mount to uh, it's bolted on there like I showed you before but then this rail of the of the trailer ends there with another bolt through it so I think that might be the easiest thing to do is just to drop that down um, focus so I'll, I'll support the trailer on some jack stands and then drop that down and then I can slide that arm that winch mounting arm there to where I need it to be uh, and then we can work with that I think that's going to be the easiest way Right, that was a battle, but I managed it in the end. I had to take the, the tow hitch off, the little plastic holder for the uh, trailer socket thing. I had to undo those brackets there and there, and also the other end of that rail there and underneath there. But I got it on. Now I need to get it in the right position, because obviously it can't foul the jockey wheel handle, and the winch itself needs to mount correctly on there. It comes with this mounting plate here. Yeah with a load of holes in it so it needs to go on there somewhere like like that I'll have to figure out exactly where parallel to that of course so um, yeah that's going to be the next job probably drill a couple of holes in there drill through that make sure that the winch itself doesn't get in the way of that and uh, yeah fasten it down oh and this needs a hole in it as well for this pin to go through to stop it sliding backwards and forwards Right, so I've got the winch plate, the mounting plate now, that line, not that one, that one is the furthest back the plate can go. So now I just need to get it positioned parallel to that. 
and then I can drill the holes in the arm to mount it. Prior to that, I also need to drill that hole there. So I'm going to do that one first because it'll hold this in place. I've made sure there's clearance of the jockey wheel from the winch itself here. So, uh, so yeah, that's the next step. It's not going to be quite central down the trailer like I was hoping, but it's not bad. It's better than before anyway. So uh, that'll have to do. Right, that's the mounting plate uh, bolted down nice and solid. Next thing to do is mount this, um, I think it's called the fair lead, and that goes on the front like that. So that'll be the next job. Come back in a second and show you that. Right, that's on there. I had to mount it upside down because of the projection of this bolt here was interfering with that, but I don't suppose that matters too much. Um, so yeah, next thing now is to mount the actual winch itself onto that plate. Well, that part was nice and easy, just four 13mm bolts into the existing uh, holes in the mounting plate, so that's all good. So the next part now is wearing it up, so I'm going to have to read the instructions for that, I'll come back in a second. So the instructions don't actually say, but it seems pretty clear that that positive needs to go to that positive, and that black wire goes to that negative, because that's the motor, that's the controller solenoid thing, and then these ones here will go after the battery. So uh, I'll put those on first, and then we can connect to the battery and see if it works. So that's the winch bolted down and wired up properly. Um, I will take these off and put a bit of silicon grease on the terminals just to protect them from the weather. Uh, I have tested it, obviously, um, and the cable has currently got some tension on it, which means that the manual release won't work. So first thing to do, connect it up to the battery. Now this battery is not fully charged, so I've actually got it connected to a charger as well. Um, the winch came with ring terminals on the end of its cables. I happen to have these crocodile clips lying around, which have also got ring terminals. So I've just bolted them together, wrapped them with tape. It's not ideal, I know that, but it'll do for now, just testing it. So we'll connect it up, negative to negative. Positive to positive. There we are. Sorry for the camera shake. And now we'll turn, take my glove off. Turn the remote on, hold the button down so it powers up, and then press the out in, sorry, press the out button. Do that again, release a bit of tension. So we'll release that from there, and then flip that over to manual release. Locks in place, and now that cable will pull out. So I'll pull it out, hook it up to the beetle, and drag it back in again. Well, that was really easy. Um, it was possible to steer the car and winch it at the same time, which is so much easier than having a manual winch or even using a drill on the manual winch like I had last time. So it was still powered, but I had to be at this end of the trailer to winch it up. So that was all good. A couple of comments on the winch itself. Well, the first of all is to do with the way I've positioned it. Because I'm fastened it to one side of the car and because this is more towards the centre of the trailer, which is where I wanted it, the cable is bunched up on this end of the drum. No massive problem i don't think but that's something the other thing is there's no manual override so if you haven't got a battery or the battery's flat or fails for whatever reason you're stuck you could it could do with some kind of handle on it just to uh, you know to override the motor um but for the money i'm very happy with it uh it looks the part works quite well 
and makes getting immobile cars onto the trailer, like this one, significantly easier. Right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget like, comment, subscribe and all that. And I'll see you next time when I'm probably going to be working on this. Or the square back. Or the 63. Or the trailer. Right, cheers. Bye.